G'day, Jason the Middle Age Gear Junkie here. This is the Marshall Blues Breaker from the early 90s. This is one of the most sought after pedals on the market and it is one of the most influential designs of the last 30 to 35 years. If you're lucky enough to find one online, they fetch upwards of about 700 Australian dollars. And this is the Moore Blues Crab. This has been around for about 10 years and this is a pint sized little clone of the Blues Breaker. So is this a fair fight? We're about to find out. Before we do, please hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content on this video today. All right, let's get to it. So I'm playing my Strat through my Fender Deluxe Amplifier. Here's my clean sound. So I'm going to start off with the blues breaker. So as you can hear, it's got a really weak volume pot and that is common amongst the original blues breakers. So I've got to turn that volume up to about three quarters to get it to unity gain. And as you can hear, it's kind of dull sounding as well. The clean sound's got a bit more sparkle to it than the overdrive sound. Now, as I start to wind in the gain, you'll notice that the tone will start to get brighter. So that's also a characteristic of the blues breaker, which is the gain pot also winds in a bit of sort of present upper mid frequencies as well. And already that is just sounding like home to me. I absolutely love that tone. Yeah, that's, that's the blues breaker sound. It's so responsive to your pick attack. So um, people often ask me, do you roll off the, the uh, volume to clean it up? You don't need to with this pedal. It's just so responsive that it's all about how you pick the guitar. So... That's why the blues breaker is my favorite type of light overdrive. Now let's see how this tone knob works. It's a little bit crunchy. Doesn't make a huge amount of difference when you wind it down. So it definitely brightens it up a bit. So I'm just gonna back it off a bit. You get all that note definition, you get all that pick attack. Oh, it's just, for me, this is, this is the one pedal that if I had to start all over again, this is the one I would buy first. So let's have a look at the Blues Crab. So again, we've got a bit of a volume drop there.
It's definitely in the same territory. Uh, as I winded up that gain, I don't know if you noticed, it did get a bit brighter. So there, it's very dull. It's almost like a tone and, vol and gain pot in one. It feels like it's got a bit more brightness to it. It's a little bit more um, spiky. Yeah, that's definitely in the Blues Breaker ballpark for sure. It's got those really nice present um, upper mids. I, I think it's a little bit fizzier up right up high than the, than the actual Blues Breaker, but it certainly sounds very similar and it's very uh, responsive to the pick attack as well. And it's only got a very small amount of gain. I mean, it's, it could barely be called an overdrive. I, I think it's more of a boost. All right, let's check out the tone control here. So when I turn it down, it's a little bit dusty. Uh, when I turn it down, um, similar to the Blues Breaker, it doesn't do a whole lot. Well, yeah, when you get it up past halfway, it becomes very, very shrill. So uh, I've got to back that off. Yeah, I do feel as though that the uh, Blues Crab here is a little bit more compressed than the Blues Breaker. Yeah, I just, I find that the Blues Crab just to be a little bit more squished and it's definitely got a, a different upper mid-range. I think it's got more fizz to it than the, um, than the Blues Breaker. Let's see if I can get the Blues Crab to sound exactly the same as the Blues Breaker. So that's the tone I'm after. feel as though the original is holding a bit more bottom end and that's helping to balance out those upper mid frequencies. Yeah, I definitely think the Blues Breaker is holding a bit more bottom end than the Blues Crab. The Blues Breaker would probably be long forgotten if it wasn't for two people. The pedal builder Analog Man, who based his King of Tone uh, around the Blues Breaker circuit, and John Mayer, who a couple of years later came up with his album Continuum, which he started using a blues breaker in. And uh, people just went nuts over this album and his guitar playing. And when they found out that he was using this uh, somewhat derelict pedal called the blues breaker, everybody wanted one. And the prices have gone up ever since. It's easy to see why he would like a pedal like this, because there's just so much single note articulation uh, with the blues breaker.
I can hear you all screaming, humbuckers. So here's the bridge humbucker of my Sheridan. We'll start with the blues crab this time. Yeah, I find it a lot less inspiring um, on a bridge humbucker like that. It doesn't really do much for me. I just want more growl and more gain. On the neck humbucker. Yeah, I prefer it on the neck. It just, it's at home, I think, on neck pickups. Yeah, for me it sounds way, both of these pedals sound better on the neck pickup than on the bridge. I've had this Marshall Blues broken now for about two and a half years and it has not left my board since I bought it. Uh, I did a video a couple of years ago called My Search for the Perfect Light Overdrive and this was the clear winner in that case. Uh, I even owned at one stage a Klon KTR and I just much preferred the sound of the Blues Breaker. It's an imperfect beast, it's got a few quirks, so it's only really got one usable setting. For, in, in my case, that's having everything up to about three o'clock. Uh, that's where I like it, but it just sounds amazing through neck pickups and it really works well with Fender amplifiers. Um, I, don't, I think that results do vary depending on the amplifier that you run it through. Um, and for me, with my, uh, my Fender Deluxe, which is my, my main pedal platform, it just sounds amazing. As for the Blues Crab, well, I first got turned on to this pedal after watching a demo by a channel called Pedal Picassos. In one of their very early episodes, they did a demo of this pedal, and I think they even compared it to a Blues Breaker, and I was really impressed with the results. Not only was I impressed with how well this fared, but I re the, the tone that those guys were getting I, was the tone in my head, the one that I'd been looking for for about 18 months. And I went out and bought this, and... Playing this for a few months inspired me to go out and get the real thing. So uh, that's how good this is. This is a fantastic um, iteration of the Blues Breaker. It's not quite the same. I mean, its top end is a little bit different. It's a little bit more harsh in the top end. It doesn't hold quite as much bottom end and it is a bit more compressed, so it's not quite as responsive. But, you know, when you look at the price, this is probably the best $60 I ever spent in my life. Uh, and you know this this is worth more than ten times the amount I paid for this. So you know if you're in a situation where you want that kind of sound, this is a really really good option, especially when you consider that other blues breaker style overdrives are not cheap. This is the only one I would say that's in an affordable range. All the others, uh, whether it be the JHS Morning Glory or the Snouse Black Box uh, or the Analog Man Prince of Tone, they're all quite expensive pedals to get your hands on so uh, if you want to try this style of overdrive you do yourself a favor and get yourself one of these the Mua Blues Crab because I think they are terrific. So if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and if you haven't already please subscribe. Uh, remember you can support this channel by going to the Middle Age Gear Junkie store I've left a link in the description below. Uh, I've also left a link to the Middle Age Gear Junkie Facebook page if you would like to join that and uh, join in some of the discussion there. Other than that, my name is Jason, and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you later.